My name is Lester Monzon. When I was really young, like when I was in elementary school, um, it came to, the, to me where I started reading comic books. My reading wasn't the best. I kind of was kind of like a late learner or a challenge learner. Um, so uh, one of my teachers at the time in elementary school would buy me comic books and he would just be like, hey, over the weekend, read this and tell me the story what you read. So I started getting into comics when I was really young. And then I started to try to draw, you know, which a lot of kids would do, you know, you try to draw like Spider-Man or Superman or Batman. And that's how I started to draw, you know, um, at first I would trace over them and then I try to do them on myself or then I started making my own poses. And then, you know, you start creating your own superheroes and then you start making your own comic books and then you realize from that you got to color in the comic books you know you got to color in and then um i didn't like the crayon be uh, just because i didn't like how it looked so i started you know doing with really like really cheap watercolors and brushes so i started doing with that so i started to learn how to paint that way because i started painting when i was fairly young with watercolors, you know? And then you just do that after, you know, from there you go on to like acrylics and oils and then your, the, the, the medium starts to change my view of what art is. Because I didn't really go to museums a lot when I was a kid, you know? Um, that wasn't really exposed to me that much until, until uh, my last couple of years in high school because I transferred over to a magnet school and then um, it was kind of like a performance, a visual performance uh, art high school. And so that's when more introduction started to come in, uh, into me as like art in the sense of like contemporary art or like what fine art, you know, traditional fine art, I guess you can say. And uh, but before all that was just me playing with the materials, you know, and seeing what they can do, you know, um, and then from there, you know, you just start to keep, you know, you start to obsess over it and the materials, the art, art history, contemporary art, you know, and as you grow up, you know, little by little, because after, after high school, I started to do a lot of murals, you know, so I did quite a few murals in Long Beach, you know, with uh, elementary schools and stuff like that, which was fun. I did it for quite a few years. Um, I did it with uh, uh, a Long Beach artist, mural artist uh, named Greg Navarro Pickens. So, uh, which actually we did a mural at Long Beach University. Oh, cool. Uh, you know, but you start to, it's something else when you start to get this commercial side of it, you know, because we're doing these murals and then you just keep start questioning what you're doing and you want to be able to have more or have more meaning in your life or change the meaning of your life or change the meaning of what you're doing, you know? So then you, cause to become a fine artist is to, it's, it's like a real commitment, you know? Um, it's a real, it's like a marriage, I guess you can say, or like a relationship, you know, it's a real commitment. There's a lot of artists that I, I know, who have never stopped. I've, I think I've only known a couple of people that really don't do it anymore from like college, you know? Um, yeah, so it's like a major, and when they stop doing it, it, to me, it feels like, oh, they got a divorce. Like they've divorced their last lives. You know what I mean? So that's how I, you know, would say my how everything kind of climbed up. I always start off with the graph, which is like this grid that you're seeing in the background. And for me, that's always kind of like, it's kind of like the order of everything or the way things are kind of supposed to be and the way, you know, everybody goes to work and everybody, you know, things that you're supposed to do, like an active, productive person, right. you know, like, we're supposed to fulfill our roles, you know? Um, and so I always start off with that type of a, a grid. Um, and then from there, I destroy it. I destroy it by painting. 
Now, for the past couple of years, the paintings or the brush strokes that I've been doing, uh, have been placing, have always been um, either a word or a, a, a sentence or almost like a drawing, something that's kind of like personal to me that nobody ever sees, kind of like this is an individual thing that no one's gonna know or means something to me. And so a uh, majority of those times are done in oil paints and it's they're kind of thick and gooey. So I set, I let that rest for a wh quite some time, especially if it's like on a really big panel, they take a while so it can dry. And I make sure nobody sees them. I make sure I don't take a photograph at this point of the painting. Um, Cause it's supposed to be extremely personal. And then I mean, that's just one aspect. The other aspect is this idea of just destroying this grid, getting rid of the grid with something that's extremely like, I'm an individual, we're all individuals. So it's putting something that's completely against what this grid is. And then I just start to destroy everything. I'll keep what I like in the sense of, of this portion of the word or the brush stroke, or I might destroy it by sanding, or I just might get like a scraper or something to smear the whole, smear everything off. Because, you know, because it's thick paint, so as soon as you start to, you know, you break off that first layer, it's all wet underneath. So I, I smear everything off, I get rid of it, and then I let it dry, and then it just goes over in this process of how, of how much I'm getting rid of and then putting back in. So I might get rid of, say, like 80% of the brush strokes and of the painting, and then I'll, I'll put back in the graph that was there underneath. Because after I destroyed it, I've also destroyed the graph. So it's also rebuilding this graph back up. So it's this consistent, from, you know, at this point it become, tends to be a little bit uh, of a like formal process type of a painting. But at a certain point I end it, I end that process. And then when I know where, where I'm right, where it's like, I know just enough what to get rid of. I know what I need to do from there. And so from there, it's kind of exploiting the, the visual that's on the panel. So brush strokes are a lot of the times they are re-rendered. I'll go over a brush, you know, I'll, there's a brush stroke and you'll see it. It's forking to the right. And you can tell at some point it was destroyed or smeared. I'll go over a lot of those areas and re-render those brush strokes. So a smear might look, the color might be more dramatic than what it actually is supposed to be. So everything is a bit exploited. And then, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll re-render the entire brush stroke so it looks like light might be hitting it a certain way, which could, could create depth next to another brush stroke or another mark or you know maybe it looks like there's like a light coming from behind the panel or you know the gesso is kind of bright um, so that's how it usually works so the area that the, i live in in koreatown in little bangladesh it's extremely congested and i think it's it's had a lot of influence on my work just because i'm in the middle of the sound and it's you know there's all these apartments here there's a lot of uh there's a lot of people that live here there's a lot of families that live in these small apartments and um everybody's just trying to get along with you with, with everybody so everything is compacted and congested um the way the city or the way the area is there's always graffiti there's always somebody tagging and then the next day it gets taken down it gets repainted over you know and then it gets tagged again and how everything is congested with people trying to look for parking people honking at each other you know it takes it forever to get around this neighborhood uh just how the idea of how rough everything is gives me or has an effect on how the painting is structured or the the end result of the painting you know so the lines and all this stuff in a lot of ways, in the grids and the graph, it's a lot of ways how I see how 
the layering out of how I live or the streets and the homes and the, you know, fun get parking spots and the shops and everything, you know, and then life is just trying to work its way around all of that. You know, frustration works its way around that. Joy works its way all around that. You know, the hardship works its way all around it, you know. In a sense of, it gives me a sense about handling paint or there's like a, a diverseness to the, the surface would be like Mark Bradford. Because what happens is you can see his hand everywhere. His hand is evident, like all around the work. You know, you see how this this strip was moved over. It was sanded here. You can see there's an indented things. How you know how probably he grabbed onto the panel or the painting and it was stretched and something kind of tore. But look, he put a tape over it and tape painted over it. You know, like I like that all that is evident like in his work because you see it you know you see the history on like on his paintings it's a history of his body of his hands of his movements you know you can see his mind working you can see it like oh i'm gonna stop and then i'm gonna take care of this or you can see where he took like a, a mouse sander and just sanded you know one whole area or he put like sh you know shoe strings and you can see how like it's all there he's not hiding anything so i really like that warmth of his painting because there's no distance between the viewer and the object it's it's just for me it's like a visual harmony because i'm jumping my eyes are going around and following things and then i'm stepping back and trying to reanalyze everything so i really for me that's like that's a very warm painter to me you know, it's, he's, a, he's extremely inviting to like, your body's invited to his work, your eyes are invited to his work, you know, it kind of tells you to get closer to it and then it tells you to move away from it, you know? Yeah, there is a bit of a dirtiness to my work or weathered, um, and that is an aesthetic yeah. that comes out of from time. You know, uh, yeah, I've always enjoyed it. I mean, sometimes there's even a bit of the, there's dust on these that kind of just build up just from the sandings and stuff. Cause I try to spray it off with like an air spray to get as much of it off, you know, but you can't do that too much. There is a delicateness to it, you know? My advice to anyone who's young and who has been thinking about being an artist, I first off, I would probably have to say, and this makes, and this might not make sense at your age, but it'll make sense a lot more when you're older, that if you're thinking that you want to be an artist, you probably already are. You're, you already are an artist. Like you're already thinking a certain way and you're looking at things a little differently from somebody else. And you know, you might sit there and be like, am I the only one thinking this? Is this a little odd? No, you're just an artist. So um, accept those moments of questioning things and accept those things that like, every time you look at something, your head's a little tilted and you know, everybody else is like heads are straight up, but you're just a little like, wait, what? I see it like this. Um, I would say, especially now when you're home all the time, draw, paint, read, read books on art, you know, I think anything that you want to do or pursue, it's something that is a passion of yours. It can be a law degree, it can be becoming a teacher, a professor, you know, electrical engineer, it doesn't really matter. I think same thing with arts. I mean, it's something that you, you really want it to be your life. And if it is something that you want it, want it to be in life, you, you, sur you surround yourself in that field, even from a young age. You know, 
if you're into acting, you you would watch films of actors that you enjoy, and you know if you enjoy buildings, you, you know, and if you're really young, you probably ask your parents to take you somewhere to check out a cool building or something. You know, um, it starts off from little things like that, and then as you get older, you know, you start to get to delve into a little bit more seriously. So if you're passionate about it, you'll find your way in there.